Okay, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming tonight. This is the first uh, first public lecture of the semester. We have, a, we have quite a number. Uh, they're always on Tuesdays and Thursdays and Fridays. Um, we will be completing the large poster that goes in the stairways. Uh, so you'll have a reminder of the lectures and, and when they're coming in. Let me call your, just call it a couple of things you may not be aware of. On, um, on Fridays and some Saturdays and Sundays, we're going to do a series of workshops, um, mostly focused on pop-up shop design. There will be four really interesting firms who are going to be coming to do those. You can find those on Handshake. And we'll send out an email soon about those as well. But those, those should be exciting and fun. But those will be Friday for a lecture and then Saturday, Sunday for the workshop. Um, so tonight we have a very special guest, Professor Park. We'll introduce uh, our speaker tonight. Uh, you, some of you may know over the last year we've begun to develop some new exchanges and relationships with schools in Korea. Um, one is Yonsei University, which is a really amazing uh, research university, but they also have a fantastic school of architecture, and we're very lucky that part of that new arrangement is that we will have some visiting professors coming here uh, over the course of the next couple of years, and tonight is our first visitor, and uh, She'll be speaking about her work and also I think about her research and maybe I don't know about her, about the studio here. I'm not sure, but she's teaching a visiting critic studio with Professor Park. If you go into the visiting critic studio, it's in the back and on the left, so you should go and visit them sometime. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Professor Park, who will uh, make the more formal introduction. Thank you for coming. We'll also, uh, as we do with all the lectures, we'll do the lecture here. And then we'll go downstairs, and there will be food, and we'll have a conversation um, downstairs, and it will be more informal. And some other people will join us who are coming for the food. Of course, you're not here for the food. You're here for the lecture and the food later. Um, but they will probably join just for the food and the great conversation that will ensue after the lecture. So thank you all for coming, and I give it over to Professor Paul. Thank you, Dean Speaks. Um, and again, so after the lecture, we'll go and then do the Q&A as well as the discussion. So um, we met um, Professor Sung for the first time last summer with Dean Speaks and myself visiting um, Yonsei University. And um, Professor Sung showed one of her projects. Um, I think she might be talking about it today, but the um, Yun Dongju Memorial and um, it's always amazing to learn about the project through the architect. Um, and I, we had a wonderful experience. And, and the, you'll, you'll notice the, oh, the intention and the simple, sim it, it looks a bit simple, but it's actually quite detailed. So how you achieve that kind of fluid or natural state with all these intended details what was quite fascinating for me. So um, it is a pleasure to introduce her. So Professor Jun Sung studied at Yonsei University and the Architectural Association um, AA School in London and is currently a professor at um, Yonsei University in Seoul. She interprets architectural design in the context of urban dynamics and investigates how design and its process respond to the live cities. She looks at and engages with elements of the city we live in and fabricates physical and social relationships within. Um, she also has been running the AA school, visiting school in Yonsei for a decade. Um, so she has a, quite a lot of experience in working with um, international students as well. So please um, join me in welcoming Professor Jun Sang. Thank you. Thank you everyone uh, for welcoming me. Um, it's been a pleasure 
two days <laughs> so far. Uh, I arrived two days ago and I'm uh, still trying to recover from my jet lag. So I'll do my best at trying to make it clear today. Uh, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's about my sort of mostly built project. Uh, uh, hopefully we'll have another chance to talk about the research, especially in my studio. I'm teaching the Visiting Critics Studio uh, downstairs with 10 of my students in the theme of K-food and how to look at the, how to dissect the K-food and the, uh, the related elements and then making how we can sort of represent architecturally into the drawings and models. So um, I'm kind of uh, challenging a little bit because I'm in a new environment as well, so I didn't want to do the same thing that I, I've been doing in Yonsei University. And then um, Professor Park showed me around the, the school yesterday and it was amazing. You guys are so lucky to have uh, uh, these lovely schools and then good environments to learn the architecture. So in a way, I'm a little bit jealous that my students don't have, have this. But um, yeah, so I'm um, looking forward to having a whole semester with you. So today's um, session is called How to Design by Not Designing a, um, well, of course, the first design means more sort of in broader terms of the design, and the later design means more in sort of a, a, a narrow term of the design, like a drawing and proposing something uh, physically. So um, I've got quite a few uh, slides, so I will try to speed up. <clears throat> this is where uh, I spent uh, in my 20s in, back in London. So as he mentioned, I studied at, at the AA at most of your age. Um, hard time, very intensive, uh, struggling sometimes, still very happy sometimes. But all I learned, I, all I can remember from that years was just question. So what? You meant to laugh here. <laughs> so uh, yeah, whenever I present something, I you know I, I work hard, and my tutors and other critics say, "So what?" And I was like, a, really freaked out because I wasn't ready to answer that. I don't know. I kind of uh, I tried that, and so what? I, said, I don't know. <laughs> so for the last twenty years, I'm trying to answer the questions, and um, probably. Now I can say that at the I'm not sure, but at the moment I can say that I'm working uh, for a social sustainability of architecture. At least for me, this is probably the most important thing that I can kind of trust and why I'm doing this. And um, funnily enough, 20 years ago when my tutor said, so what? I really hated that question, but these days, I keep asking the same question to my students as well. This is how much that is important. So you have to always ask why <laughs> and why I'm doing this. Right, so um, I am not designing for building. I am actually designing for a social impact. You can probably imagine a little bit. And in order to do that, I thought maybe we have to design what they need, not what they want. So I'm not a sort of a English speaker as a fast language, so I don't know whether this is correct, but to me, need is what they actually need. When they say when they want this is when they, you know, when, when we meet our clients, the first thing they say, I want, I don't know, like a three-story building with a commercial on the first floor, or whatever, residential on the second floor. So this is more like a direct architect's uh, 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 client's request. So the reason why I'm doing this is um, they are not professionally trained to interpret their dream into the architectural brief, and we are. So architecture students are trained to analyze all this combined information and data and then we can bring we can bring into their sort of uh, uh, the architectural brief so we have to the first thing that we have to do is find out what their question what their request what they need is so in order to do that I'm working with people so I'm not a god architects are not god 
So I need to work with the community, I need to work with the user, and then, I don't know, whoever or, or other consultants, we have to work with a lot of the people and for the people. So then, some people ask, so what's architect's role? Then I would say, my role is to provide a space for them to complete their dream. So here is pan, it's not pen, it's pen, it's like a frying pan. Pan in Korean means plate, board, sometimes addition when we talk about book, and it's place. So uh, well, a lot of meanings, but uh, wh when we say whatever, whatever pan, we can say a place for, an in a, 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 as long as we provide a, a, a space in the right location, in the right timing, that can accommodate whatever the program that they need. So that's why we are working with the people. So uh, I will present some of my uh, small, nice little projects. <laughs> um, first, design with the community. So this is very old video, when I, just now in my studio, when I talked ab uh, about my AA student life with my students, uh, I found they were not even born. So, <laughs> right. Um, Mambo number that's five. That's me, yes, 20 years ago, in my thesis project. Two thousand two or two thousand three um, in London. I don't know whether you've been to like Brick Lane Market in London. It's quite a famous street market uh, where you can actually uh, buy anything basically in very cheap price. So like the same like a toothpaste is like half half the price. I don't know how they kind of uh, bring the, the the product. And also if you um, get your your bike stolen. Uh, if you go to the Brick Lane Market on that weekend, you can buy your bike back. <laughs> so that's kind of that. Uh, that tells the, the the market. Oh, am I getting some message? Right. Uh, so what I did was um, that was my site for my thesis project, and then I brought this donkey, very old lady donkey called Mavis from the city farm next to the Brick Lane Market onto the. Uh, onto the Britney market so that I can communicate with the people. So it was about like uh, 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 testing the program and testing the site and then bringing the, uh, 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 starting the dialogue with the people about the area, how sort of uh, the two, two area was separated, how that can be mixed, uh, how, how much they perceive about the other side of the sort of uh, the railway, et cetera, et cetera. So this was called uh, direct action encouraged by by my uh, tutor. At that time, to be perfectly honest, I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so, but towards 
um, some years later, I kind of uh, slowly started to understand, oh, maybe that means this, that means this. But anyway, that donkey day uh, kind of changed my life that I found, I feel so comfortable working with the people, working with the live things, working with the community. And then that video became part of the sort of important part of my portfolio. So when I got a job, that video, when I show that video to my interview, the company manager either like it or hate it. <laughs> So it was quite good that kind of it filters out whether I fit this company or not. So I, luckily I got into an education team uh, where I can, where my manager actually wanted me to continue this kind of uh, uh, engagement with the community. So the first, very first practice uh, uh, a project that I got was a, a, a community uh, uh, a primary school. And I did a workshop with the kids, uh, with the art workshop, and then we got all these drawings and then we combined and then we printed onto the toilet uh, wall. It was so simple and it didn't cost a lot of the money. But that toilet became the most popular, the most favorite place for the students when the whole school was open. So that was the moment that I kind of uh, realized how much people enjoy working together with the designer because they feel like they built a school. So I kind of it proved and I started to sort of trust this process. And then back into Korea, I, uh, I, I went back to Korea in about 10 years ago and I started to working with the kids. Um, uh, 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 Save the Children Korea had uh, this kind of a project about we 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 uh, we we bring the the children's rights uh, right of play back to the society, and eighty percent of the children were not happy about their playtime, and eighty percent of the parents thought they were giving enough playtime. So this is the reality. Uh, so, well, as an architect, yes, we are only designing the playground, but when we work with the NGOs and the community, with the parents, with the school, and the, with the local authority, we were able to sort of uh, trade our playground design or playground equipment with the school's sort of a guarantee of the playtime for the children. So when uh, save the children NGO sort of provide the playgrounds and then and the school guarantees about like 45 minutes of the playtime after their lunch hour or something like that. So we started to sort of uh, change the society. I don't know, it, it probably it, 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 it may sound weird, but in Korea, education is so competitive and even for the elementary school, um, they always go to like a private school and then study right after the school, so they don't have enough time to play. So that's why we feel so um, sorry about them and then done this kind of project. So um, just going through them, some slides, I'll show you how uh, I worked with them, if the slides going properly. So um, yes, through the participation of the user group kids and the local uh, parents and the schools, we were able to educate them how important this play is, how important this uh, ground is, the space is. And maybe a lot of people know how this participatory design works. So we do the, a series of the workshop with the students and uh, what kind of a play uh, uh, game they, they do, what kind of a space they want. And then this is about their uh, the diary of a week, how they spend their time, and then sharing the idea with their parents as well. And the parents' uh, concerns and ideas about uh, the management and the operations, etc. And they're working with the committee and all sort of things. So then we design, uh, we come up with an idea that everyone can have a better understanding why we came up to that sort of decision. So uh, people are familiar with that and people feel that it's their uh, 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 space. So it's not really about how it forms and how it looks like. It's more about we, while we uh, do the design process, uh, we sort of 
we, we, we are making the team who will be running the program and running the space as well. So I'll skip that. If I can skip that. Yeah, and the next project is, it's not a build project, it's a competition that we've done a long time ago called Move to Care. Uh, as you could kind of imagine, it was about a, a design competition, idea competition for uh, a medical, uh, uh, medical care uh, moving around the world uh, uh, for, for, for the country who, who needs in, in, in the third country. So what our team has designed is this doesn't really look sexy, it doesn't really look nice, amazing uh, architecture, but what we designed was the system. So if we look a little bit closely, um, what, we designed, what we proposed was the, the uh, mobile truck comes in, uh, coming with a, the professional sort of medical uh, staff, and then it kind of builds up its own local center and then also on the second line is it's about the people. So the professional medical uh, people are training the local people. And then when they leave, the local people can at least run a uh, basic part of their medical center. And then the colorful ones comes back regularly for any sort of a serious uh, operations or whatever uh, for the uh, medical center. So that's where the, our colorful people are. So by doing this, we uh, can make more sustainable, more sort of um, uh, uh, adjustable uh, architecture. So getting into the detail, there's two kind of a container size uh, mobile truck having the elements of the build or the frames and, and, and tents, et cetera, to build. So easily build product and that can sort of build whatever layout a, a, as they want it on site. And the next project was, it's also a, a, a competition called Place and Displacement uh, done by my uh, research group and it was about the refuge in Germany. The question we had was uh, how would the marketplace respond to the increasing refuge population? How does the marketplace influence the relationship between the newcomers and the local community? And how can the market, marketplace be the gathering place where they can exchange as well as they preserve their community identity? So with all that mind, well, yes, making it short story, this was the proposal. So like as a scenario base, basically we've, uh, uh, it, we spent a long time to look for the site and then we decided, okay, we'll work for the Berlin Wall. So uh, it's called uh, 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 Mauer Market. And instead of uh, having this Berlin Wall being left as a sort of a scar in the city, we wanted to use that as a sort of a stitching point. So where this refuge and the local, existing local community can gather and then make something happen and then make the community healthier. So that's what we wanted. And this what just a, sort of a, a system sort of idea, having a sort of a system wall that has sort of a, a lead and outlet and electric pipe and water, but all these services and all this kind of a furniture comes out so that you can have exchange market and you can also accommodate a refuge family as well, temporarily. So, uh, or the program that can contain was the buy and sell, dine, play and care and hygiene, all sort of stuff. Well, idea competition, yeah, <laughs> I hope everyone can understand. Um, also, this was the architecture and public administration competition. So we proposed together with this architecture, um, this was the cycle that I presented. So from the left-hand side with the very vague one, the newcomer comes in, we kind of searched how the policy in, in Germany works. And then we kind of adjusted, okay, what, what about we propose this? So the, the proposal was the newcomer comes in, train for three months and becomes the market seller. And then for another a year and a half, they become the market governor and then they can mentor back to the, the newcomers. And after, I don't know, four or five years, they become part of the community so that the whole um, refuge and the community can work sort of in cycle. 
Right, um, from here is a kind of built project. It's Red Farm, called Red Farm. Well, we named it. I got a phone call from Heiwi, which is an artist sort of village uh, not far from Seoul. And they were all very artistic people living all together. So um, they said, oh, Juven, um, we want a, uh, we, we want to hold an Apple festival, so I want, we want you to design the uh, booths for that. How many? Uh, I don't know, as many as possible. So, okay, how big? Mm, I don't know, just a booth to sell this, the Apple. Okay, so we had a meeting, and then I, I was sitting with, a, in, in a room, I was sitting with a, like about like 20 old people trying to <laughs> tell me their each individual request and their request was like okay yes it's a booth for apple festival and they they want to use every year for festival but somebody says oh but like apple festival will be just a, one once a year so when it's not in use as a daily life, we want to use a sales tool because it's artist uh, village. They make all these kind of jewelries and the products as well. So they want to make use of it. And as also we want to have a heel so that we can move easily. Okay, so by this point I was like, mm, okay, <laughs> that's a little bit getting too many. And as, oh, we are all old, so we don't want to stand, we need to sit. Okay. <laughs> And it also needs to be a landmark so that when you drive outside, so we can see it. So, okay. And the last, it says, yes, and it's Apple Festival, so it needs to design reminding Apple. So, okay, so this, was, this wasn't all. Trust me, there was so many more. And then the money, the budget they got was, uh, in US dollar, it was about like $40,000 only. So I was like, okay, with that request, what can I do? What kind of booth? How many, how many booths can I make? And I came up with that. <laughs> My assistant said, I found this. Maybe we can give them this number and they can probably buy five of them. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. And then we probably, uh, we don't have to do any work. Um, but yeah, I mean, architects, you know, born as an architect, we kind of thought, oh no, yeah, we should do something about it. Let's do something fun. And the idea was, okay, let's make use of the Lego idea. And we used the, um, the material, EPS, expanded uh, polystyrene form that we, we, you know, we make the ice box and stuff. And then we found a really good factory who makes this part of the uh, Hyundai, Hyundai uh, the car, uh, the, the elements. So they were really bored of making thousands and thousands of those uh, elements every day. So when we approached this, probably this doesn't really make any benefit to them, but they were so excited. It's, oh, sounds really fun. So they were, they were super helpful. So we are lucky. So what we designed was this. Very simple sort of Lego uh, box. It's just a two different color. We didn't have enough money. Well, this was a slightly more than this. Um, uh, 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 this this was I can't remember. But well, it was within the budget. So two different color, one single uh, module. So it had a height for multifunction, sitting, when it stacks, needs to be a stool for sales, etc., etc. It also has to have a, a structure in it, so it has got the ribs in it, and it needs to have a Lego stud and tube so they can stack together, and an EPS production factory in Ilson was very helpful. It was a light enough so that we can move around. It didn't have a wheel as they requested, but we said this is a light, so you can move around and apple color. Yeah, that was the easiest part that we, that we didn't have to think about. So um, we made, I think we made 3,000 units of it or something like that. And of course, we didn't have the money to build. So I went on site with my students. Um, so seven of us uh, uh, built whole day, but I think we probably only used like one third of them or something, but it was kind of big enough to have a walls and stools and etc. And that's my little boy uh, having a Lego uh, with the module. 
So with this module, we were able to build a different forum as well. And well, I said, well, it's not like a, a, a huge and high landmark, but at least it can kind of, it can see, it can be visible from distance. And that's how they used. And also, we, um, uh, we've done the, the graphic design as part of it, as a packaging and the box design, et cetera, et cetera. And that's how I use it in my house. <laughs> Very useful, mm. insulated. Right, the next project is called the Do Room. Do Room means like, yeah, it's, it's a room for doing something. And also, Do Rumi, which is a bird name, because uh, it's about the echo town. Uh, Restoration of an important ecosystem in the DMZ area. And that's how I kind of joined this, this uh, uh, project. Again, the budget was tiny, <laughs> but they wanted a lot. So first they approached us, we need a toilet. Toilet? Okay, why do you need a toilet? Um, they are doing this echo tour program. And then when you bring people in, the first thing that you need is a toilet and a space for education and a space for whatever activities. So we've worked with the community, DMZ Echo Research Institute, Echo Lab, and the local authority and us, designer. And there, throughout the whole process, there were a lot of the community engagement. And this area was only like an hour uh, away from Seoul, but because it's the, in the, the demilitarized zone, it's very quiet and full of uh, uh, old people, quite quiet. They work for the agriculture, but in the winter time, they have nothing to do. So they were quite eager to do something else so that to, they, uh, they can sort of regenerate the area. So they were, uh, we were educating community and then they, they, they made them themselves as a local docents and then developing the local food product and they also worked for their brand identity as well. And uh, we started as a participating their uh, sort of eco tour. Then I, I was able to understand why they say they need a kitchen, they need a, a toilet, they need a, a space, blah, blah, blah. Because I thought they were greedy with that little, little money. They were, they were asking so, so much. But when I'm sort of into the project, I was able to understand most of the request. So we worked really hard having a lot of the meetings um, and what they basically asking was the toilet, kitchen, experience space, education space, dining and local product sales. But the area we've got was only like 60 square meter. So how I persuade them was when you occupy the space, when you divide into the space, the each space will be only like 15 square meter, 20 square meter. But I said, let's put all together and then you can occupy time, not the whole space. Then you can make use of like 48 square meter for dining, 48 square meter for education, 48 square meter for the, uh, the sales. And they were like, ah, <laughs> okay. So um, very simple idea that it's, it, it can be nothing for us, but for, uh, for them, it's, it, it was a good idea. So this is the very simple white box. It was only 50,000 US dollars. And I can't believe that with that little amount of money, the building actually stands. Uh, yeah, it's, it still stands. Uh, so a small box on the green field. And this, well, we didn't even have a, 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 a land. So the, one of the, the local person had to, uh, they, has to uh, give up part of their uh, part of his uh, rice field, so these are all his rice field, and we were able to use part of the, the the land. So wanted to make use of the rice field as a beautiful landscape because it changes the colors throughout the seasons. It turns into green, brown, in the winter with the snow it gets white. So um, the simple just. You know, I, can't, I couldn't really do much design because we don't have money to build. So the only sort of a design thing was to strip the window that I can kind of bring in the landscape into the space so that people can see it from inside. And this is how we've done it. 
having a sort of a kitchen right in the middle as an island type so that the community uh, 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 can be sort of a, a cook, a main cook, so that they can welcome the visitors and having a seeds around so that they can see out, etc., etc. And that's how we build. And while we were building, actually, the builder uh, got the project and later on he actually confessed me that he was going to sort of uh, build really roughly and run away <laughs> because it wasn't possible with that little money. He, he, he couldn't really uh, see how his boss kind of uh, signed the contract and he was like, I was almost like run away. But while he was building, I mean, these are the local people, you know, old people, they're all very diligent. They come, goes, and they say, hi, how's it going? Are you okay? And it comes, you know, comes with the teas and coffees. So the builder couldn't really run away, so he had to do his best. <laughs> and uh, when they come to, like, uh, planting the landscape, it was the, the, literally the local community and with us and then doing the work all together. And later on, they are running the eco-tourist programs and eco-educational programs. And then last winter, they were like, oh, what are, what are you going to do with this winter field being empty? And then they came up with a sled idea. So, well, these days we have a modern plastic sleds, but because the old elderly people were able to, well, this is all recycled material, they kind of, they were able to make it. So it became kind of a fun activities and then became really popular to the local because the kids can see how the sleds are made right next to their ice link. And then that's how I've been using and made a lot of money. And my local kitchen becomes really popular. Right. How am I doing my time? Okay. Am I supposed to finish at eight? Okay, yeah, I'll speed up a little bit. Right, uh, Learner Studio is a, a little open studio in my Yonsei University campus. Um, the school high level person called me in and I do a mini studio in six months. And I don't know why I always have a limit of the time or the budget, but anyway, the six months, okay? And, and they said, we can, we can probably build some, some sort of a glass box here. It's like, just a glass box, just a glass box. But you know how difficult it is to build just a glass box. So the site was here. This is our main gate, main street of the campus. And it's so visible from the main street because it needs to be, it's a symbol of a, 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 our sort of open educational platform. So it needs to be visible. So when I went onto the site, yes, it was visible from the main street, but when, I, when you're actually standing on the site, I realized how beautiful the campus was. So I wanted to use sort of backwards so that this place can be a place so the, the students can actually uh, enjoy the view towards the campus. So the, the concept was basically, uh, rather than build a whole glass box, make making the glass box as small as possible because the Korea is so hot in summer and so cold in the winter. So glass box is not very useful. Can't use in the summer too hot, can't use in the winter too, too cold. So made a studio as small as possible. So just enough size so that you can have a, like a speak, speakers and a camera. And then I made a big roof so that you can have whatever the activities can happen. And with it, so having this landscape sort of a continuous as well. And because I've been working with the kids for the playgrounds a lot, I was thinking maybe we need a playground for adults. So came up with this idea with the ring swing. So like that, having just a roof so the people, uh, the students can rest when you're stressed out of the studio. And then when you, when you have uh, events, we wanted to have a curtain, sort of mesh curtain, so that it can at least sort of define the territory of the space. And you can have any sort of a concert or lectures and stuff. And this is how it looks. Looking towards our campus, I'm built. 
And that's when we had this um, uh, sort of a dual studio uh, with the AA school and uh, having an, an Andrea Branzi on our screen, having a conversations and etc. So depending on the events, we could use expanding from the studio or just the outside space. And having equipment, having a nice view from the studio and having a sort of photo Instagram spots for the students, it became. And while it's, we've got only three the, 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 the swings, so it's sometimes you have to wait. <laughs> And we've got some familiar <laughs> person as well. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this mix. Right, the last project is the one that uh, Professor Park mentioned. Uh, it's called Yun Dongju Kinyamgwan. Means Yun Dongju is a famous poet, Korean poet, in the memorial hall. Yun Dongju was the most loved uh, poet by Korean people. He was born in China, grown up in Korea, and died in Japan. So it's kind of uh, three countries are involved in his life, and he or he he died in uh, in in his twenties. Um, making it short, it started from his first memory in 1947, and his bereaved sort of uh, gave all the uh, uh, legacies uh, onto. To, to us, to Yonsei University, and we had a sponsor, and then that's how the project has started. So we were sort of uh, thinking about how uh, we can reinterpret this. Basically, this building uh, was built 100 years ago for a student dorm at that time, and this famous poet, Yun Dongju, actually lived there because he was one of our students. So that's why this, uh, this building became so valuable and it was registered as well in, in this building in Korea. So uh, rather than like a sort of a, a seeing a sort of a dead old items in the museum, we wanted to make a live sort of memorial hall that it can keep uh, rolling and wheeling the uh, uh, conversations about the poet and literacy. So uh, we wanted to create something and we wanted uh, to make from legacy in the past to the, make something in the future. And we wanted to make this as a, a having a placeness. And also from his poet, uh, you could read a lot of his, his mentioning about the windows and mirrors and looking into yourself, etc. So we wanted to uh, use, yeah, it's telling me that I have to finish my, <laughs> yeah, I will speed up, uh, uh, into, into the space. So um, that's a three tiny uh, three-story building and uh, we propose exhibition on the ground floor in the library and then from library uh, items are curated into a, an exhibition and then from the exhibition the items are indexed and are linked back to the library. And then from library, if there's any events, it can, it can be held on, onto the uh, third floor uh, as an event. So with this uh, three-story program, we were hoping that this place is used for sort of uh, wheeling the whole uh, Korean modern literacy and something about Yun Dongju. And that's the... Um, uh, the external wall and the windows that was beautiful, we wanted to sort of expose. And this is how it's been done. So on the upper plan was 1922 when it was used as a dormitory. So you have a corridor and you have a rooms off the corridor. And then now because it's an exhibition space, we didn't have to have like corridor, the room, corridor, Room. So we recreated a new circulation of the external wall. So we attached, uh, sort of detached the wall from the external wall and then created a new circulation for the exhibition. So mainly sort of the newer wall, the white wall for the exhibition was detached from the external. And then when people are walking along the, the, the circulation, you can actually enjoy the, the original part of the 100 years old uh, history building and the window and the, through the window, a landscape, beautiful landscape of the campus. And when the corridor lost its function, 
Now, we've designed the, the lightings quite subtly and then uh, sort of exhibited this as part of the, okay, maybe 100 years ago, the student dome might look like that. So as if the, the lighting comes from the, uh, uh, the door, room door. Yeah, that's how it feels. So mainly, uh, basically here, what we valued was the existing uh, building and the existing uh, timber structure on the roof we wanted to expose. So we got rid of all the, the ceiling uh, uh, product and, and just exposed as it is, and I made uh, the lighting to so, sort of exaggerate how, it's, how, how it stands and, and uh, make use of the dorm, uh, the, Dormer, what do you call it? Dorm, dormer window. Yeah, we stage that area as so that people can kind of enjoy the poets. And when we got rid of the sort of unnecessary mortar, which doesn't really work as a structure, and it kind of exposed a part of the wall on the on the lower, and then we just left it so that you can sort of feel that the layers of the history, because over hundred years they put wallpaper, they put mortar, they put plasters, etc. So when we ground them, it kind of, it looks kind of a bit dusty, but it kind of, you can feel the, the, uh, the history. And again, uh, 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 along the construction sort of a stage, when we encounter those kind of, uh, the, uh, how, how the building was built, the tectonics of the 100 years ago, we kind of cast it as an exhibition as well similar to this. So basically valuing the hidden existing building. And um, I couldn't really sort of capture it as a photo here, but we worked to, uh, very closely with the uh, 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 exhibition uh, curator and the curating furniture, and the, we also designed, we designed ourselves the shelf and there's a little boxes to, uh, uh, not disturbing the atmosphere of the uh, the memorial hall, but also doing the function, sort of not sterling from it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we've designed sort of a whole thing, including the graphic design as well. And also after that, we sort of wanted to value what we had to delete. Um, sort of as an agony of architects, and then we made a, a sort of art piece and exhibited in the Seoul Biennale uh, of architecture and urbanism. Mm, so half of the sort of a 70 of the uh, model colored indifferently and having a black, uh, a black mirror that you can kind of make a, a, a perfect circles. Right, you can find uh, more information in the Google Art and Culture when you sort of uh, 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 search. You can sort of virtually navigate the space and you can also see the content. The contents are amazing there, yeah. And um, yes, I've shown some of my build, uh, projects and uh, while I'm doing this project, because I'm a teacher as well, <laughs> So oh, I'm also doing, of course, I'm doing the research and education. So while, whenever I uh, 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 come to a, po a, a point that I have to make a decision, this kicks in. So my research uh, topic about how we can engage the community, or what kind of methodologies we can uh, use, and how effective are they at what stage, with what, etc., is part of my uh, research topic. And also, I'm from slightly social side, but um, I'm, I, I am a co-founder of the Social Algorithm Research Group, which is also the running a fishing school for the last 10 years. And between the social sort of issues and the data, etc., and we're working with the um, digitally <laughs> driven people. So that's also an interesting topic. And, and also the interface between the public and private. And like what I propose for, for Learner Studio for the, uh, the mesh curtain, I'm always interested in the relationship between two spaces, how I can change it with what kind of design of the interface. So that's my sort of research topic. So hopefully if you're interested, in, you can always contact me to my email address and then we can have a further conversation. 
Thank you very much.